you and we praise you, O oh God. I give you praise, I give you thanks. Thanksgiving comes from my heart for your word. Your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that what it's set forth to do in this congregation today. Those in other parts of the building and those listening by YouTube, Lord, I give you praise. All of the social media, anyone that hears your voice this day through this word, I ask that none of my words will fall to the ground, but you will bless this message. I give you thanks and I give you praise. And God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Let's turn in our Bibles, if we can, uh, to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. And once again, we're going to be speaking about God blessing us. And God has great plans for your future. That's the title of my message today. Praise Jesus. Well, thank you, Father. Verse 11, uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your This light is, something's wrong with my light today. I don't know what it is. Well, Father, I just thank you for, thank you, Jesus. And your final outcome. He will give us hope in our final outcome. Another translation says, expected end. Our expected end. What are we expecting today? What are we expecting God to do? For, for me, from my own perspective, I'm expecting God to do great and mighty things. I'm expecting God to come out of, to bring us out of darkness into his great light. I am expecting God for a great and mighty revival. That's what I'm expecting, and I believe that. He says, what is your expected end? What are you believing me for? Can you believe me? And I realize that we, we all come through things. We all come through. I know, I know that I know that I know he will continue to be God. His ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than ours. But he will reveal to his people the things that need revealed. I know the plans I have for you plans to do you good, to give you peace, not evil, in your final outcome, your final expected end. Today, God is saying to you and I, while in process, stick to the plan. Nothing takes God by surprise. He's a master planner, beloved. You think you have your little planner every day? God is a master planner. Joseph discovered that, that when his family like, turned against him and his friends let him down, and he finished up in trouble, he expected God to move. God still had a plan. Looking back, Joseph would say, you intended to harm me. What you planned for evil, God intended for my good. Somehow, at the end of the day, God will take whatever the enemy has tried and turn it around for his good. Genesis tells us this. He says, I know what you're planned, but I know the plans of my God is to do me good. Do me good. Some of us, beloved, are not sure that, what, that God has made up his mind about us. We're still in the fence wondering. We keep trying to earn his favor. We keep trying to, be, to do good and do good and do, and that's wonderful and that's great. But you can't do any better than Jesus Christ did on that tree. He took the price for you. He paid the price. You can't add to that or subtract. 
It's the finished work of Calvary on Calvary's tree. So we, we try to earn his favor. I would, if I have three words to say to that today, give it up. Just give it up. Receive this truth that God, for Christ's sake, has decided to bless you. Whether you, you believe it or not, he is, he's going to bless you. If he hasn't already, it's coming. And when God decides temporarily situations or the actions of others don't change his decision, there's nothing the enemy devises against you. Nothing that God hasn't already made a way of escape. God's made a way where there seemeth to be none. And if you're not in that way right now, hang in there because you will be. God's showing up. You know, we were singing that song and I thought, God works the night shift. We, God's working, God's working, God's still working. God works the night shift. While we're sleeping, God's always working. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be, to be tempted above anything that, you are, that you're not able to, to do. He's faithful, but will we'll make a, a way, a way through the temptation, a way to escape that you may able to be able to bear it. He, his strength will be your strength and your, your day of frailty. His strength will be your, your strength. When you need his anointing, he'll be there for you. Hallelujah. Understand, beloved, and observe. Observe these things. One, in times of testing, you discover how God is so near to you. You'll find him in the, the, the dark times easier than you find him in the light many times because it's through the darkness that you're searching for him. When everything's going wonderful, you know, when everything's the way you, know, you would love it to be, the bills are paid, the children are healthy, your, your wife or your husband has a job, whatever the situation might be, you know, we, we tend to back off of seeking God with all of our hearts. It's when we have emergencies, it's when we have, you know, uh, pray, I see it all the time, when something's going wrong in people's lives, they're, then they're here on a Wednesday night for prayer. And there's nothing wrong with that, beloved. But I'm just saying that we have to understand human nature too. And we tend, in the darkest of the times, to search out for God. But he's saying to us, search for me in the light also. Keep close to me in the good times. Keep close to me, not just in the bad times, but in the good times, because I will be there. He will be there. So we find this one thing. In times of testing, you will find out how God is so near to you. You will feel him. You'll know he's there. You, it, you may have to struggle somewhere to get there, but you'll get there. The second thing you'll find out is that he knows what you and I can handle. He knows. The third thing you'll find out is he will make a way so that you can exit this season, whatever season it is, stronger and ready for what he has in the next. So beloved, stick to the plan. Stick, stick to the plan that's God's plan for your life. Well, you say, well, how do I know God's plan? It's peace and it's pleasantness. And his timing is perfect. So be persistent and just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Thank you, Father. You'll exit this season stronger than you ever went into it if you trust him. So we, we say, well, you know, we have a problem. Thank you, Father. If we have a problem, it's a sign that you have a promise. It's only a matter of time before God reveals the solution because he knows the plans he has for you. Plans to give you peace. Plans that you don't even know anything about yet. But you will find out if you just keep close to the master. Just keep close to him. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Matthew 14, 27, Jesus spoke to his disciples when they were in the midst of one of the greatest storms of their lives, when they thought their lives were over. And he said these words to them, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. It is I, do not be afraid. Beloved, we keep our eyes on so many things instead of the Lord. We need to put Jesus first. We need, to, we, we need to praise him constantly. We need to sing to him. We need to worship him. We need to talk about Jesus, sing about Jesus, put Jesus in every part of our lives. He's not going to leave you. He said it in his word. I will never leave you. He didn't say, well, if you're a bad boy or a bad girl, I might leave you for a season. No, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I know the plans I have for you. But we have to believe that. Thank you, Father. So I'm asking a question today. Are you going through a dark, difficult moment in your life? I know many people are. Many people that have been hit very hard through this year with many, many things. As Paul so aptly said earlier today, it's the truth. We started off this year, and now let's be honest about it, it can't get out fast enough. Yeah. And it's not just the COVID all over the world, it's all kinds of things that have been happening. Because I truly believe that the enemy's trying his best shot and it's not good enough. I said it's not good enough. He's not taking the church out. The Bible's very clear. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. And they're trying to prevail. No, the church will rise up. And the church is going to rise up. No matter, no matter how many people may feel fear and all these other things, sooner or later, people are gonna say, I've had enough of staying home and I'm coming back to church. Amen? I believe that. I truly believe that. So whatever you're going through at this moment in your life, is the storm around you raging? Is it raging on and you're saying, when, Lord, when, Lord, when? Are you feeling ready to cave in? Come on, let's just be honest about it. You're saying to yourself, I don't know if I can face any more. I don't know about this storm. I don't know. Be comforted, beloved. Be comforted today. That Jesus sees what you're going through and he always comes to where you are in your darkest place. He'll always be there in the darkest hour. He did that for his disciples on that stormy night on the Sea of Galilee. You know, one time I was visiting there in Israel, among many times I was there, and remember this particular guy took us out to the middle of the Sea of Galilee and put the anchor down and we sat there and it was like a sea of glass. And he was sharing with us because of the, the way the mountains and all of these other things are situated, that a storm, he said, you know how you're looking at this right now? And we'd say, yeah. He said, well, when the Bible talks about that storm, with Jesus walking on the water and what have you, or Peter, <coughs> excuse me, Peter and Jesus. And, and he said, this is what it looked like seconds before it happened. He said, those storms could come up just like that. How many of you know what I'm talking about? One day your life is perfect, the next day all hell has broke loose. And it takes only a second. Only takes one phone call. Only takes one person to share and say, I need help. All hell has broke loose in their lives. And when those, uh, when that guide told us these things, we, we were looking out there in amazement because it literally, you could have walked on it. It was so calm. He said, no, no, he says, moments after that, 
He says, it can happen like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And nobody, nobody is prepared when it comes. When it comes, it comes. When your eyes are on Christ, even though the storms are raging and the winds are blowing, thank you, One thing, I'm finishing this message. (coughs) 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 And there's nothing wrong with me. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> I am totally healthy. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. So, this is where I was. Don't be fearful. He will come to you walking on the stormy waters. Hear his comforting voice this day, beloved. He's telling you, And he's telling me, be of good cheer. Not doubt and fear and anguish and anxiety. Be of good cheer. It is I. Who is I? I is the great I am. The I am you need. Whatever you need today, I am your healer, I am your provider, I am your soon coming king, I am your husband, I am (coughs) everything, everything you will ever need. This is what he was saying, it is I, I, the almighty God, the great I am, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, it is I. It is I. Oh, beloved, I'm saying this under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You need to hear God say to your heart today, it is I. Be not afraid. afraid. The more you listen to people, the more you listen to television, and I'm, uh, yeah, come on. We all want to hear the news. Okay, I got it. I'm there with you. But there comes a time when you've got to shut off every voice around you. There comes a time when you've got to shut off every device you have, including yeah. cell phones. And I, I mean, let's be honest about it. Most of us, and probably myself included, more than likely, yes, we'd have to get delivered and go through withdrawal if we lost our phone. Yeah. Come on now. Am I in the right church? Because it's the truth. But you can't be still and know He is God if we're caught up, caught up, caught up, caught up. We need some downtime. We need some time to say, Jesus, speak to me. And he will say to you, it is I. It is I. Be not afraid. Don't be fearful. He'll come to you when you're in the midst of that stormy water. You'll hear him. I pray that in Jesus' name. And as you behold Jesus, you become like him. You will find yourself doing things that you could not ever think you could do. You will, like Peter, you will start to walk in the water. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? I'm not talking about the physical water. I'm talking about you will walk on the top of your problems. The top of your problems. This happens. This happens when you are occupied with the person of Christ, with his resources with his love, with his wisdom, with his ability, with his power, and with his majesty. Stay close to the master. Shut out every other voice that would cause you to fear, that would cause you to have anxiety. Close them away from you. As a man thinketh in his heart, beloved, so is he. 
And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Don't speak words of fear. Don't speak words of doubt. Don't speak words of depression and oppression and, oh, I don't know how I'll ever get through this. You'll get through it by the grace of God. Think about the people in the world that don't have the Lord the way you have him. I don't know how they get through it. Hallelujah. Even during the times, beloved, when you do take your eyes off of Jesus, he never takes his eyes off of you. He said in his word, I know the plans I have for you. And when you cry out to him, he will immediately stretch out his hand to catch a hold of you. You will not go under. In Jesus' name, you will not go under. You will find like I have over the years, his grace will be sufficient for you. I promise you that. His grace will be there. There may be times that you'll not be able to find your way back. Jesus will be there holding you. He'll be holding your hand and walking you back to the boat. And like Peter, you will realize, beloved, like many of us have, that with your hand in his, the storm will come to a standstill. And you will see one day, you will look back and you'll look, say, and then you'll say to God, I see now the plans that you have are good plans for my future. Good plans for my future. Peter said these words in the middle of that storm, Lord, bid me come unto thee. Bid me come unto thee. And Pete, Jesus said one word, come, come. Listen to this, beloved. When Peter was come down of the ship, he walked in the water, and when he saw the wind, he was doing fine till he got into the natural realm. He was walking. I mean, we can talk all we like, but has anybody here tried to walk at Niagara River? Come on. There was a great amount of faith in Peter, a great amount of faith. He had his problems like every other person, but he had a great amount of faith at that point in his life. But he began to sink. Now that's really something, and many years ago I, I taught this, but I, I just felt it was really of note today. When he saw the wind, he was afraid. You see, you begin to go down when you start to allow fear into your heart. Because fear is false evidence appearing real. It truly is. And if you continue to be fearful about whatever situation you're in today, might be tomorrow or next week or next month or next year, let me tell you, this is what happened. He saw and felt the wind. The wind was always there. When he was walking on top of the water, the wind was there. He began to sink. Beginning, the Bible says, to sink. How do you begin to sink? It's impossible. If you are on, in, uh, on top of water, you don't go, you go whoom. You go straight to the bottom. He was beginning to teeter and totter. And this is what fear will do to you. That's why when you ever feel that fear, and we've all felt it, it's like a grip, a grip, an iron grip that hits you in the pit of your stomach. You know what I'm talking about. That's fear. Well, there's fear, and then there's a spirit of fear. And if that fear's been with you a long time, start to talk to Jesus. Let him take care of this for you. Or have people pray with you. Because God never gave you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind. Why does, that, why does that sound mind come into the same scripture as a spirit of fear? Because God knows it starts in the mind. That's where it starts. The battle is in the mind. Hallelujah. Jesus stretched forth while he cried unto the Lord, save me, Lord, save me. Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Notice three things. One, it takes more than one step to get there, beloved. This wasn't a little two-person rowing boat where you could just hop over the side. No, this was a ship. It was a huge fishing, fishing ship where they would have 
fish, it would just fish, fish. I mean, it could sink the boat with the fish they could bring into those boats. This was huge. It was not a tiny wee thing. To get to Jesus, the point is, you have to climb down and keep walking. Persistence, keep walking and keep your eyes on him. In other words, persevere, persevere. Listen to these words. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. It is the courage to continue that counts. It takes courage to continue to believe that whatever you've been through, going through, might go through, you have to believe that his word says he has great plans for your future. Not to give you evil, but to give you good. Thank you, Father. So it takes more than one step to get there. The second thing you will notice is nobody walks without fluctuation. One moment it feels like you're walking, the next you're sinking. You're having an attack of the what ifs. Anybody ever had an attack of the what ifs? Let me explain what the what ifs are. What if you get too far away from the boat and you can't make it to the shore? What if the money doesn't come through? What if the cancer comes back? What if your child doesn't come home? What if you haven't prayed hard enough? Oh, that's a big what if. That's where the enemy gets in right there. You, you, what do you, you don't pray hard enough. You don't do this, you don't do Do you know what that is? That's the voice of the enemy. Because it's not dependent on how hard you pray or how hard you don't pray. It's dependent on what you believe God did through his son, Jesus Christ, for you and I. That's what it's dependent on. Not what you do. Nothing you can do. We pray, yes, we pray, we believe, we supplicate. We, we pray with thanksgiving. We thank him and we speak the word. Oh, hallelujah. So what if, what if, what if, what if you haven't prayed hard enough? Faith means standing on stuff that you used to, you used to sink in. That's what faith is about. Oh, hallelujah. Declaring, I am going from talking about the presence of God to walking in the provision of God. God has a provision for us. It's in the Word of God. I just read it to you many times. I know the plans. God's not thinking about doing good to you. He knows. And that's what I hold on to, beloved, and that's what I'm teaching you. Because he said it. I know. I know. Hallelujah. The third thing to notice about this whole thing with the storm, God's power is for people who are going down. Anybody will invest in a company whose stocks are going up, but God will invest in one that's going down. Didn't he invest in you? Didn't he invest in me? Of course he did. Listen to this. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. So if you and I feel today that you might be sinking, just cry out to Jesus because he will be there for you. Don't ever let anyone take your hope, beloved. Hope deferred will make your heart sick. And when your heart is sick, your mind will start to play all kinds of games with you. And when you don't feel that there's a hope for your future, it's just a miserable life. That's the truth. I spoke last week about this and I just wanted to quickly just say it again because it's so important. Faith is hope. Love is hope. Prayer is hope. And we need to be there for each other to give each other hope. Hope. That's what we were talking about in Jeremiah, to give you hope in your final outcome. Your fi God's not finished yet. None of what we're seeing in this world is a surprise to our God. No Nothing that's happened to you in your life is a surprise to God. God's not finished yet. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is no doubt in my mind that God is undeniable. 
I've been sharing with you for a couple of weeks now about some, just a, a, a strange thing that's been happening in my life. And it's, I wake up in the morning and I'm hearing these old songs. And I'd, they're from many, 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 many years ago. And the other day there, it happened again. And I want to ask you a question. Are you going through? Yeah. I think I'll ask that again. <laughs> are you going through? Yeah. Of course we are. We are as Christians, we are as Americans, we are going through. Yeah. And, and as I was, I was laying there saying, God, why are you doing that? Why are you giving me these old songs? And I heard this song come up. I'm going through. I'm going through. I'll pay the price, whatever others do. I'll take the way of my Lord's anointed few. I started out with Jesus, and I'm going through. Are you going through? Amen, are you going through? So turn to that person beside you and say, I'm going through, come on. The Bible tells us in Lamentations 3.21, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. This I recall, therefore have I hope. When you can't feel his presence or see his hand, look back. Take inventory. When Jacob was faced with the biggest crisis of his life, God visited him. But he didn't realize it until the next morning when he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. I knew it not. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely. His presence is with you. You might not have goosebumps. You might never feel this presence, but it doesn't mean it's not there. Hallelujah. I'm going to wrap this up in a few moments, but I want to say this to you. There are two thieves in your life that will always try to overcome you. Two thieves that will always try to steal your peace. You say, well, what are they? Yesterday and tomorrow. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. He didn't say, don't think about it, don't plan for it, don't make arrangements for it. He said, don't worry about it because worry and fear in your life is a strong indication, beloved, that you may be losing trust. Because when you go to where I'm talking about and worry, 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 fear, 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 it's over. The enemy's got you right there. You're afraid of yesterday, yesterday's gone. Well, what if that, 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 no, it's gone. The only time you have is today. Yesterday will take your peace. Tomorrow will take your peace. But today you can have peace. You can have peace. Listen to this carefully. Hope and fear cannot occupy the same space. Invite one to stay. Invite one and get rid of the other. Get rid of the other. Bless God. Bless God. I just, I just want to close this with a, a little, I haven't, you know, I've not been doing jokes all the time, but I felt the Holy Spirit was telling me just to, to say this today to you because We've all been there, maybe not in this particular situation in life, but we've all had to repent. Amen? Okay. There was a, a, a painter by the name of Jock, and I think when I read this, it may have been a Scotsman with that name, but we'll see, who was very interested in making a penny where he could. 
so he would often thin his paint to make it go further. As it happened, he got away with this for some time, but eventually the local parish decided to do a big uh, restoration job that involved the painting of one of his biggest churches. Jock put in a bid, and because his price was so low, he got the job. He went about uh, uh, erecting the trestles and setting up all the planks and, and buying the paint, and yes, thinning it down with turpentine. Jock was on the scaffolding, painting away when the jo- with the job nearly complete when suddenly there was a horrendous clap of thunder and the sky opened and the torrential rain washed the thinned paint off of the church and knocked uh, Jock off of the scaffold and right onto the lawn among all the gravestones. Surrounded by telltale puddles of the thinned and watered down useless paint, Jock was no fool. He knew this was a judgment from the Almighty. So he got on his knees and he cried, Oh God, forgive me, forgive me, what should I do? Forgive me, what should I do? And then the voice spoke from heaven. (laughs) Repaint, repaint, and thin no more. (laughs) Amen. Amen. I want to... (laughs) Yes, Holy Spirit, I'll do that. I want to come back for one second to say something again. Hope and fear cannot occupy the same space. Invite only one to stay. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Would you do that with me today? Would you invite only one to stay? And I pray that one will be hope. That one will be hope, hope that God will do what I've just told you in his word he will do. Hope that he will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. Hope that he will forgive all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hope that he'll be there when we need him. Hope, 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 precious hope. Father, I pray this over these wonderful people today under the sound of my voice. I pray in the name of Jesus, they hear your voice through me. I pray, Father God, that they will take the word they have heard today. They will take that word into their hearts. And those, Lord, who felt that they were coming to the end of of themselves, let them, let them, Lord Jesus, just turn around and get close to you again. I know I'm speaking to somebody, Lord, and maybe more than one, but it keeps coming back to me. Don't you dare give up hope. Don't you dare give up hope. You hang in there and you trust your God because he's there for you. Trust him. Thank you, Father. Let's pray this prayer together if we can, beloved. Heavenly Father, I thank you for hope. I thank you that you love me and you care for me. You care for my family. You care for my needs. If you see the little sparrow that falls from the tree, how much more do you see and care for me? So today, by faith, I'm giving you this situation. And you fill in the blanks, whatever it is in your life. Take a moment, just take a moment. Whatever you carried in here today, You can let it go in an instant. Just take a moment. And now say this with me, Lord, I release this. I release this fear. I release all of it to you. I ask you, the Prince of Peace, 
to be my peace this day. And I receive it by faith. Amen and amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray for you today, beloved. I pray that you have a wonderful remainder of your day in the presence of the Lord. I pray that as you leave this place, you will feel uplifted. You will have hope and you will have joy in your hearts. And I pray that as the week unfolds and each day that you wake up, you will wake up strong and energized in the Holy Spirit. You will wake up ready to face the day with a smile on your face and, and faith and joy and hope in your heart. I pray that you will finish your course with joy. I pray this day for peace in the name of Jesus. I pray this day for health in the name of Jesus. I pray this day that every one of your needs will be met according to his, his glory, his glory in Christ Jesus. Every need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Every need, spirit, soul, and body. I pray the Lord has blessed you. The Lord has kept you. The Lord has made his face to shine upon you. And the Lord continue to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and continue to do upon you. And these words are so precious. And the Lord give you peace. You can't possess peace, beloved, if you don't have hope. Let hope arise in your heart this day. In Jesus' name. Amen.